What's good YouTube, Mosey Designer here, doing part 3 of my Unreal Engine 4 basic tutorial. Today I'm going to be covering post process and screen space reflections. So to get started I've already built a quick scene uh, using the concepts I've taught in tutorial 1, tutorial 2. And jumping on from that I'm going to cover post process and screen space reflections. So to get started we'll go to Window, Modes, and we'll go to volumes and post process click and drop that if you don't see it it's most probably because you're in game mode hit G you should see the volume I'll go to my perspective and I'll hit top I want my post process to cover the entire map so I'm using my scale tool to resize this post process volume and I'll go to my left view make sure scales this way as well. Go back to my perspective view. Now to actually see the changes of post process you want to be in game mode so I'll hit G and I'll go to my search and type post process. Just post should be enough. If you double click it it might zoom out. Don't worry about that. So with my post process selected, there's a couple of settings I can change in the details panel. One of the first things you want to do is you can change your colors based on the white balance and temperature of the scene. If you know how to do that, I believe this is in Kelvins. So I change this to like 8000. I can have more of a red feel. If I change it more to like 2000, it goes more blue. So it's based on the Kelvin value of the uh, color. So I'm not going to use that, but it's something you can use. You can also go to uh, Film, which I use the most. Click on Tint, and then you can change the color. Uh, I would like to go, again, depending on your scene, you can have it be more red, green, blue, but Try to use it tastefully because you don't want to oversaturate your post process because that just looks ugly. So I want to find a right, a good balance of contrast and colors that feel good for the scene. So I'll do a little of a blue, kind of a blue punch to this uh, scene here, right about there. Let me darken it up a little bit. You can do the tint shadows and you can also do a lot of really cool stuff here. But I'm just going to go over the highlights and the basics of what you really need. The next thing you want to do is go to scene color and click on that and change the overall color of your scene. Again, try to be tasteful. You don't want to really punch it too far because again, it just looks really ugly. So hit cancel so I can go back to my white and you can really kind of go for kind of an orange daylight kind of yellowish feel again this is all subjective and really up to your art and creative direction for what you really want for your scene or level you can also change the fringe intensity of the, of the scene color Basically, it says in percent scene chromatic aberration, the camera imperfection simulated an artifact that happens in a real world lens, mostly visible in image corners. In simple layman terms, basically, it adds a cool effect on the corners of the scene. So you can just kind of bump that up to 0.75, 0.5. You can do a vignette intensity. Again, it adds nice bordering or shadowing to your scene. You know, if I really go high, like one, you can see the shadows kind of get you a tunneling effect of uh, the colors. If I do two, see it's even more harder on that. So I do a nice, you know, like maybe a point seven five for my vignette intensity. You can also do grain. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. You can do grain intensity. So yeah, so if I, I turn my grain onto a value of two and an intensity of two, it gets, you know, really fuzzy. 
But hey, maybe you need that. But we can do like a 0 0.5, even a 0 0.0, 0 0.25 value on my grain. Even 0.1, just gives you that nice fuzzy feel. If you need it for your scene, again, a lot of this is artistic and subjective to what you really need to do. But just going over the basics of what you can do. You can adjust your bloom. You can in intensity, you just crank that up to like 2. You can decrease it to 0.25. Again, whatever you feel is right for your scene. You can also uh, adjust your auto exposure. This is really cool if you have that HDR kind of real world effect of coming in a tunnel, out of a tunnel. Auto exposure of lights. Uh, if you really want that to have in your level, you can do it from here. You can also adjust your lens flares, the intensity of your lens flares, you know, the tint of your lens flares. If you have lens flares, I don't have lens flares set up, so that's not going to really do anything, but the option is there. And another big thing is the ambient inclusion, kind of your sh your shadows. You can definitely crank that up to like a value of 0.75. You get nice grip shadows. Global illumination is kind of your indirect lighting color. You can adjust that as well. If you look really closely in these top corners, you can kind of see how global illumination is affecting the scene. So if you really want to just adjust your corners there in the shadows, it's really good for that. Uh, you have depth of field. It's really good for larger scenes, but you can set your depth of field as needed. And uh, you have your screen space reflections. I'll come back to the setting in a bit, because first we need some screen space reflection actors. And what they do is just add some really cool reflections to your scene. So to do that, we'll go to Window, Modes, and we'll go to Visual Effects, and we'll add a Sphere Reflector. Hit G to get out of game mode. So in here, the details you have the radius of how far you want the reflection to go. So I'll just drop this down to about a thousand. So see now you can see how far the reflection is. I can maybe do 500 and maybe have it one over here. And you can adjust the brightness of how much you want the uh, reflection intensity to actually be. So the, the higher the intensity, the more reflectiveness you'll get off the surface. So I'll add a couple of these. Don't want to add too many because I believe the editor has a limit of how much you can actually add before your scene becomes too expensive. So again, you might want to check. Uh, with your technical artist or if you have an understanding of what you actually need to have reflecting uh, definitely don't go overboard with spe uh, screens uh, reflection actors so I'll just add three one for each major corner of my scene And then we'll go back to post process. We'll hit G. We'll go all the way down to screen space reflections. I'll turn that on. Intensity, quality, and max roughness. So again, intensity is how strong you want the reflection to actually be. 100 is the highest. So you do like 50. Quality. Again, the higher the number, the more performance it's going to take on your level or your scene. So again, trying to find the right value that works for the performance of what you're trying to hit. Again, if it's just an artistic piece, you can really crank it up because it doesn't have to run on a PC or a PlayStation or Xbox. But if it's for a shipping game, definitely be very careful of how much quality you actually have because it does take a hit on performance. 
So I'll set my quality to around 75 since it's just a scene. And doing an autosave, it'll cancel that out. Will it let me cancel it, continue. Okay, cool. Get out of here. And then the roughness. The editor suggests 0.8 is a good value, and it usually does a really good job. But again, you can crank this up to 1, you can do 0.1. And the more uh, roughness you have, the, the better or worse your, not worse, but like the intensity of your reflections are. So that's some basic overview of post process and screen space reflections. I'm going to do a quick build and we'll see the difference uh, of how the scene actually looks. All right, I'm back. Did a quick lighting build. As you can see, these are the results of the lighting. Pretty much close to what we were actually doing during the tutorial. That's a cool thing about Unreal, what you see is what you get. But again, if, if there's something I don't like about this, I can go back and change the settings. So I'll go back to my post process, and I, let's say I want it to be a little more darker. I'll click on my tint and really you know, mess with some colors here. I can mess with my scene color tint to really get those reds in there. And let's say, where's my intensity? Yeah, my vignette intensity, let's say, to that point two. Brighten up our corners. Maybe I want a more blue color, so I'll kind of match my scene to my tint. And, you know, the scene will look like that. Or for example, if I wanted uh, more warmer colors, I can just go to my tint and push it to red, yellowish red. Change my scene color tint to the contrasting color for my shadows. I can really, you know, lower my, get rid of the grain, get rid of the grain jittery, uh, reduce my fringe, and really, and then actually just remove the fringe and vignette intensity, and bring my scene color up. And there, I've quickly changed the scene from, you know, uh, orange and blues to just more of a brighter orange feel. Uh, if I wanted to go more blue, again, I can just, for the hell of it, take my tint color, not that it matches, but do something like that, and do my scene. Oh, it might work, you know. And, you know, change the colors that way. So, again, that's a very powerful tool to really up your lighting with post-process and screen space reflections. Hopefully that was helpful, and be sure to comment and subscribe. Uh, I'll figure out what I want to do for my next tutorial. If there's anything you want to see, I will try my best to cover it. But till next time... Uh, I will see you then, and I will also try my best to put up another speed level design video very, very soon. And uh, uh, take care. Cheers.